Okay then, in this video we're going to have a look at Google Documents. Well, actually Google Drive as it's now known. Um, recently it changed from being good old Google Documents, which has been what Google's been using for quite some time, into their Drive thing. And in fact, if you go to Google itself, .co.uk or .com, you'll see Drive right next to Gmail at the top. Now, Drive, what it is, is in a similar way to those people who have looked at the tutorials on Dropbox, it's Google's sort of approach to cloud computing. The idea is that you can upload and, as it says here, access everywhere, store files safely, but also you can collaborate with Google Documents. And this is particularly useful when you're sharing documents with students, the students then sharing them with you, and also each individual student helping out each other and collaborating on their work. It's particularly useful as well if they're doing stuff using Google Drive and Google's sort of PowerPoint and Word as we'll have a look at. They can create documents within Google Drive and they're always there. It's like having a virtual USB stick which is in, cloud, um, in the cloud and basically they can access everywhere. Now the first thing you'll want to do is you actually want to sign up. So if you go to Google and you click on Drive, and you can see this, you can actually click on the Sign Up button. Now it'll ask you for a few bits and pieces and details. It'll ask you for your username, which is usually at Gmail, but um, I mean you don't have to have this, you can actually make it use a normal one. So you can actually put in here, as I have done, your school account. Now this is quite important, and when the kids are doing this, this is what I asked them to do. I asked them to actually sign up using their school email address rather than if they have a Gmail one. It just means that what you're doing is you're making sure that you're not getting that sort of crossover between their home and private bits and pieces and what they're doing in school. It's very important to make sure that that's vetted. And then also you know that the email they're using, the email that you're actually maybe communicating with them with, is something which is being monitored by the school. And it keeps that general sort of privacy policy as far as the child protection issue is concerned you know just make sure that that's all okay so they can register with the names make sure that that's one there create a strong password in my experience it's a good idea to keep this as one that you use maybe for your own network and certainly for the kids it should be something that they're going to remember their birth date as well this is quite important they might have a few issues with that as I'll talk about later on and then obviously your usual proof you're not a robot once you've done that, it'll actually send through a verification email or request a verification email, which you have to click on. When you're doing this with students, um, it's very important that they do this, and it's also a test that they've actually got it correct. Being in Leicester, it's amazing how many students actually can't spell Leicester, for example, when they're asked to create an email address. Because my particular email address, and the one that I use on this, is just msutton at Saw Valley. and then dot .lester dot .seh dot .uk. Now, of course, obviously, quite a few of them may well actually be the same type of thing. Um, you can say here, I prefer to use my current email address, which will allow you to put in ones. Notice that Google prefers you to actually use a Gmail one, but you don't have to. And it's better if you don't, especially when the students are creating theirs. So you can put theirs in there, and then they'll send a the verification email to it. Going back to where we were previously, and I can go back to signing in, once they've actually signed up, or you've actually signed up, it's just a case of actually signing in. So I'll just sign in on here. You can see that we've got my life with a couple of different accounts that I use with this. And then I'll sign in. Now once you actually get onto Google Drive, what you actually see is this type of space. And you can see over on the left hand side, this is the most important bit, um, the actual Drive screen. And you can see there's an arrow to the side of it. If I click on that, it'll actually bring up all the different folders that I've got. Now these are different ones that I use, especially with my Year 10s and my Year 11s during the product design course. And if we have a look at some of the stuff that I'm sharing my Year 10s, for example, you can see the different bits and pieces of my verbal feedback, I've got revision help that I do with them, it'll take them through past papers, you can see we were doing something on the Memphis group for example, and if I click on that one you can see that I can access this. Now this particular one is a document that talks about, it's just an uploaded Word document, and it's got all the bits and pieces on there about the Memphis group. If I go back, close that window there, I can have a look at a 
exam revision section A that I've created. And you can see that we've got here the section A. This is a little bit about product design, helping them to understand those sections. So you can see that that's a PowerPoint that's actually been uploaded, and we've got PDFs as well. So what you have, in effect, is a virtual online set of folders that you can create. I'll demonstrate what I mean by this. So if I actually have a look at this one, I've got my drive just here. I can actually click on the Create button and have a look at actually creating different bits and pieces. Now, Google Drive isn't just a place where you can actually create virtual folders. You can create documents, presentations like PowerPoints, spreadsheets, sort of access style, forms as well, which is a bit different, and drawings. Uh, but we're just going to create a bog standard folder, and this is one of the most useful features of it, is to, to create something like a folder. Give the folder a name, and I'm going to be as original as ever and call it test. And you will see that it's automatically become just here, and it's another new folder. It hasn't got anything in it at the moment. If I click on it, it's got absolutely nothing in it whatsoever. So I've got this folder, and I can start just like as we do with any folder. We can start to think about how we can upload things into there. So let's have a look and see. We've got this to the right hand side, this little arrow. If I click on it, I've got a number of different bits and pieces like organize, markers and viewed download, remove, obviously delete it. But what I can also do is I can think about uploading bits and pieces into this. And this button here is the upload one. Now with Google Drive it allows you to do the whole contents of folders, which is very useful if you've got a number of images say that you want to share with a particular group, or you can upload particular files. And we're just going to go with the bog standard files. I'm just going to go and find my pictures again. And for those people that have looked at the other videos, I'm just going to use one of my Learning Without Frontier ones, and I'm just going to use this image just here, just a JPEG. And you can see what it's done is it's uploaded it, and it's uploaded it into that folder. So I've now got, if I go back to my drive there, and then click on Test, you can see that because I had test highlighted, it's actually put that image into there. So you can see that that's now actually inside the fold. So we've got that up onto there. And so you can quite quickly, simply upload different bits and pieces into the folder. One of the couple of things that you might want to think about is obviously if you're doing images, Google Drive will actually convert them. Now, we've talked in here about presentation spreadsheets, things like that. Now, Google itself uses its own proprietary format um, for presentations and documents. They're not actually PowerPoint, but it will actually allow you to upload PowerPoints, and it will also allow you to upload any sort of Word document, but they look slightly different. I'll show you what I mean. If we go to my Year 10 B folder just here. Actually, we'll go to my 10A one. You can see that there's a little P next to it that shows it's a PowerPoint presentation. Notice the dot PPTX. Now, what I can also do, as you can see just here, I can actually think about uploading these and converting them into something which is, instead of actually just being a PowerPoint presentation, I can actually upload it and convert it. But most of the time, the easiest way is just actually to upload a PowerPoint that you've created in Office on standard PowerPoint, and then actually just allow the kids to view it. Now you can see this one's loaded. So we've got Damanis just here. And you can see that I can scroll through the PowerPoint with the different bits and pieces that I've got on there. Now, what I would do is I'd actually, first of all, in this video, I'd actually create your Google Drive account. And then just have a go at creating a simple folder and uploading an image, a PowerPoint document, or something similar into it. If it does ask you if you wish to convert the document, just at the moment, leave it as not conversion, not converting it. And we'll come on to that a bit later on in the next video.